So is astrophotography during a full moon a complete waste of time? Well, tonight I will photograph the emission nebula, the fossil footprint nebula in Perseus, and you can decide for yourself. Tonight, the moon rises soon after that sun sets, and once it's up, it's gonna be out all night long. We're officially two days past the full moon, but it's still at 97% illumination. A full moon can really interfere with your astrophotography. Unless you're shooting the actual moon itself or the planets, it can really wash out the night sky and those dim nebulae and deep sky targets can be hard to capture. Astrophotography is a broad term, so obviously there's lots of types of astrophotography you can do when the moon is out, including photographing a moonlit landscape or the moon itself and up close and personal. But the type of astrophotography I'm most interested in, deep sky of nebulae and galaxies, that's when it gets a little trickier when the moon is out. Basically, it involves using filters to block out as much moonlight as possible, but no matter which filter you're using, the data is probably not gonna be nearly as good as it is under a moonless sky. But unfortunately, we don't get to pick and choose when a clear night occurs, and more often than not, those clear nights line up with a full moon. You guys going for a walk? Okay. <laughs> Stop. I'm not... Okay. Just you guys are going, buddy. I'm staying. I gotta set up my telescope. Have fun on your walk, buddy. The full moon can really mess with your images, whether it's a monochrome camera or a color camera. But in this video, I'll be focusing on how it affects my one-shot color QHY268C and a multi-bandpass quad-band filter, the Radiant Triad Ultra. The telescope is a Skywatcher Esprit 150 refractor, as you can see it here, and that's riding on the EQ8R Pro mount. It's going down to about minus three degrees Celsius tonight, so it's gonna be a chilly one. I know that many of you are familiar with narrow band imaging. Astrophotographers do that for many reasons. One of them is to ignore light pollution and create these dynamic signals by isolating these band passes. Specific band passes of light not only creates amazing images, but it's a great solution for light polluted skies, but also for a moonlit sky like tonight. The multi-band pass narrow band filters try to do everything all at once for you with a color camera and it's never gonna be as good as it would be if you built an entire image with those specific bandpass narrowband filters and a monochrome camera, but you'd be surprised at how great the results actually can be, I think, with these quad band filters and a color camera. With that being said, it's the hydrogen specifically, that HA, that is probably the best thing to capture on a full moon night. Look how close Jupiter and Saturn are to each other. They're getting closer by the night. And we've got Mars on this side. Three bright planets out right now. So the moon isn't up yet. We've got about 45 minutes until it rises above the horizon and it will start actually affecting my image exposures of the fossil footprint nebula. So it would be interesting to compare the four minute exposures I take before the moon has risen and after. And I have a feeling you'll notice a very noticeable difference between the two exposures. I suppose you could try shooting something in broadband like a galaxy or broadband broad spectrum target a reflection nebula without a filter on a moonlit night 
but you would really want to limit your exposures to maybe like 15 or 30 seconds. And even then, you're in for quite the task in the image processing and the things. Expect to spend a lot of time behind the computer screen afterwards and some pretty nasty gradients. So that's one of the main reasons I suggest shooting something well away from the moon in the night sky. Even if you are using these filters, don't shoot anywhere near the moon because that's definitely gonna affect it. The target I've chosen tonight, the Fossil Footprint Nebula, is actually a little too close to comfort, but uh, I just couldn't resist. It's a target I've never shot before and the exposures coming through actually look pretty good. I decided on five minute exposures with the QHY268C. So I'm excited about this one. Anytime you can photograph a new object is pretty fun. So you can see the direction my telescope is pointed behind me at that nebula in Perseus. And uh, I've already got actually 30 image exposures at five minutes each. So you should see that gradual glow increase from when the moon rose because of course I started shooting it before that moon was up. So that's interesting to see, but the multi-band pass narrow band filters like the Radiant Triad Ultra or the Optolong L Extreme were meant for nights like tonight. They're great in the city in general at all times, but on a moonlit night, they're extra handy because you really wouldn't want to shoot in any other scenario without one of these filters. So much appreciated on a bright, clear moonlit night like this. If you're shooting during a full moon or a nearly full moon like I am tonight, you have a few options. You can photograph the moon itself, of course, but uh, it's often less interesting during the full moon phase than it is in the other phases. That Terminator line creates dynamic shadows and really creates some interesting surface details for you to capture. So the full moon is not the best time to actually photograph the moon, believe it or not. You could take a nightscape photo. That moon is a nice way of lighting up the landscape. So that's an option too. You can also photograph the planets in detail. The moon will not affect planets at all. Those are very short exposures of bright objects. But if you're hooked on deep sky objects like nebulae and galaxies like I am, you'll have to use filters. A light pollution filter won't do on a full moon night. It has to be a straight up narrow band filter such as a six nanometer HA filter for your mono camera, or in my case, a multi band pass narrow band filter for my one shot color camera. I prefer the latter in most cases, but I am desperate to complete a color image with one clear night a month at this time of year. You can always add your isolated narrow band data to existing broadband data projects you've been working on under a new moon. So the time isn't wasted. So the answer is no. Astrophotography during a full moon is not a waste of time. You just have to be smart about what you shoot and how you capture it. I hope you enjoy my first ever image of the fossil footprint nebula in Perseus at the end of the video. And until next time, clear skies. I'm not. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, uh. Sit. Oh God. Sit. Just you guys are going, buddy. I'm staying. I gotta set up my telescope. It's like just her.